morning. Thank you so much for joining me on today's edition of Business Morning. We're live to you on Channels Television, your home for the news. I'm Harriet Agbenyi. It's a pleasure to have you join me on the program. So let's take a look at what we're going to be talking about for the next 55 minutes or so. Of course, we'll focus on reviewing the markets. The first trading day of the week saw mixed sentiments from the fixed income segment of the market to the equity side of things. And the currencies market is looking pretty good. The central bank's constant invention into, the, into that segment of the market is yielding results. We'll also be talking about that much later on the program with Gabriel Idahosa, who is the Chief Executive Officer of UHY Maji & Co. And of course on the program today we'll be talking about commodities. Okwemi Oguntade, who is a Senior Economic Research Analyst with Financial Derivatives Company, joins me on the program. And we'll also be talking about a local rice production. That seems to be ramping up in spite of the fact that there's been quite a lot put into making sure rice production here in Nigeria achieves self-sufficiency. There's been a little bit of a challenge. So we'll take a look at some of those issues. Listening to Biodun Onolaja, who is the CEO of Heist Global Business, who will be talking to us about local rice production. And of course, much later on on the program, we'll talk to Rotimi Fakayejo, who is the CEO of Enterprise Stock Brokers. He's also a trader at the Nigerian Stock Exchange. He'll be giving us a, a latest, well, giving us a pre open look at the numbers early trade and of course what sectors are driving the markets at this time of the day the market at that time will be set in continuous trade so you'd like to stick around and get to know where the market is coming in from yesterday where we saw a positive close but we'll get to reviewing those numbers in a bit what other things are we tracking so top on our radar of course coming from the oil and gas industry the Nigerian national petroleum corporation says it has reached a final settlement with ITO group over a 202 four million dollar equivalent of about 62 billion billion debt in respect to the under delivery of petroleum products now the spokesperson for the NNPC confirmed the group paid in full all its outstanding debts to all NNPC downstream entities totaling about 202.35 million dollars we'll talk more about it later on on the program when we start our focus on the Nigeria energy market what else is making the news and we're keeping our eye on Sterling Bank, a tier two bank, says it has attracted a $15 million facility from the Islamic Corporation for the Development, a multilateral development or financial institution and a part of the Islamic Development Bank Group to further promote Islamic banking in Nigeria and Africa. The bank had in 2014 and 2015 received $25 million from the International Islamic Finance Trade Corporation and $30 million from the ICD. Well, Sterling Bank confirmed the ICD extended the facility to it in view of its ability to use non-interest banking contracts to structure transactions in innovative ways as well as the judicious use of past facilities extended to it. Now, this week is Global Money Week, a money awareness celebration. Now, the goal is to teach children and youths about money, savings, creating livelihoods, gaining employment, and of course, becoming an entrepreneur through fun and interactive activities. Well, the Central Bank of Nigeria has declared March 30 Financial Literacy Day in celebration of Global Money Week. Week 2017. Now, on that day, managing directors, chief executive officers, and top members of management of about 29 banks and financial institutions will be visiting over 800 schools to teach financial literacy curriculum developed by Junior Achievement Nigeria, a non profit organization committed to encouraging financial literacy among school children. Promises to be fun. It's, of course, a yearly event and it's also a very good way to let the children understand how much you need to save. Have, give them a piggy bank, for instance. And then sometimes it's at this stage you begin to inculcate in them the desire to be part of the financial services system because, of course, you have to bring in the new and start to phase out the old. 
So those are some of the stories, of course, we're tracking for you. And just to quickly mention that uh, on Wednesday, the debt management office will be visiting the Nigerian Stock Exchange to list the FGA and savings bonds. So Channels Television has also got that on tap for you. But let's quickly review the markets uh, coming in from the first trading day of the week. For the fixed income segment, trading in the NTB market, that's the Nigerian Treasury Bills market, was mixed, all bit closing with a bearish bias, with average yield expanding about one basis points to 17.25 percent. Well, we're hoping to have that on for you on the screen. But uh, before we get to that, investors too remained upbeat in the bonds market with average yield contracting about 23 basis points to 16.10%. For the S&P Nigeria Bond Index, that came in at 273 uh, points yesterday. We had one day at plus 0.22%, percent, so it shows that there's been a positive appreciation in that bond for yesterday. And um, the one day, the, the month to date is at 3.56 percent. The year to date is at plus 4.13 percent. As I mentioned at the beginning of the program, the currencies market has seen improved liquidity in the last couple of days owing to the fact that the Central Bank of Nigeria has continued to intervene in that segment of the market. So let's take a look at where the Naira to the dollar is uh, with regards, okay, that's the interbank over the counter. It's at 306 Naira, 80 Cobalt. The Central Bank of Nigeria is trying to have a convergence between these rates. So if you quickly flip over, to the street market, you find it at 388. So this is a really a good step in the right direction. And of course, we'll be talking to Gabriel Idahosa much later on the program and talking about what the reality is based on the central bank's intervention. Is the real figure for the Naira to the dollar at 388 or 306 Naira 80 Kobo? as the case may be? Is it properly priced? A lot of analysts have actually said that the Naira is undervalued, not overvalued. And so at this point in time, there is really no need to have a revaluation of the Naira. But we'll talk to Gabriel much later on the program about that. So as I also mentioned at the beginning of the program, notice that the markets opened the week on a positive note, albeit uh, with not as much gains as expected. Now, the all share index climbed 0.12% to finish the day's trade at 25,485 one seven. And a market capitalization of 8.81 trillion naira was recorded. Uh, all based on gains recorded by banking, insurance, stocks, and as well as oil and goods, oil and gas, as well as consumer goods, that pushed the index up to where we saw it close at yesterday. At the end of the day, volume came in at 561.48 million naira with a value of 2.47 billion naira recorded and transactions done was 3032